Okay, welcome back. Brian Terrian here again with Ivy and Avion, and we are going to talk about your social security disability benefit money. Like what happens when you get approved, what you can expect, um, and some collection techniques if things don't go right. Okay, so there's some variations depending on when your disability benefits get approved more specifically, if you get approved at the initial application um, or the reconsideration stage that I'd mentioned, then that falls into one category. If your case goes to a social security disability hearing, then it falls into another category. So I'm gonna share with you on my screen right now, um, what to look for in the money flow based on your award letter. So this award letter has been uh, like made generic. Um, and what you want to look for, well, what most people are probably gonna look at is like what you'll receive on a monthly basis and then your back benefits. And that's going to be down further in this letter. Um, but I'm not going to spend a whole bunch of time because this is really just an example. And what I want to show you is how the money flows. So your case at the initial application and the reconsideration stage is managed at your local state office. Once your case is um, uh, decided as favorable, they take your decision and they send it to a payment center for social security. Now this one is the Mid-Atlantic um, Payment Center. And this is the, so this is, this is where, your, uh, where your money is. Um, and if you're in, uh, California, it'll be different. If you're in Texas, it'll be different. So there's different payment centers around the U.S. I've got a list of them here. And again, as I mentioned uh, earlier, the um, the links associated with this video will be put, put around. So if you're chasing your money and you want to do the call yourself, uh, God bless you, uh, then you just look up your Social Security number you know, there's Northeast, Mid-Atlantic is the one that I showed you. Um, and then this is Southeastern. So based on your social, they'll give you a phone number to call. They seldom answer. Um, so that's where it gets a little, uh, a little sticky, if you will. Um, but I do want to just back up a little bit. Um if you get approved at the initial application level or the reconsideration, I have commonly found that people will actually get paid their back benefits deposited in their bank account before they get the reward letter. I don't know what the statistics are, but it's common. So as you're in the disability approval process and you're watching your um, case status, I would also monitor your bank account. Um, and we've had some beautiful stories of a lady who, um, had a storm put a hole in her house roof. Um, and the next day was her daughter's birthday. She was out of money and wanted to bring her breakfast. She didn't have any money, but that morning she got up, her kitchen was trash. She had water coming in. She checked her phone and she had $22,000. And so from her back benefits, she hadn't received her award letter, but she called her daughter and said, listen, it's your birthday, I'm buying. So things like that are cool. So make sure that you uh, stay in touch with that. Um, so if you are um, to back up a little bit and you haven't received a decision yet and it's at your still at the local office, then that is where you would want to be looking for your for your money. So if you're at 90% and it's been stuck there, then you don't want to be calling the payment center asking for payments. 
you want to you can use this tool or maybe you already know it from prior communication is to be working with your local social security office that has your case in their um, in their caseload. Okay. All right. Uh, now for the hearings, um, the hearing process is different. The case leaves your local state office and goes to a hearing office. And these are geographically uh, located. So you might be in one state, like if somebody lives in Vermont, the hearing office is in Manchester, New Hampshire. <clears throat> and so you wanna know where your hearing office is and you can find that out um, on your notice of hearing that you would receive the communication about your hearing. Um, and it's going to say something like this, Office of Hearings Operation. So this one is in the St. Louis area for this member. So if you go to a hearing in front of a judge, then the process of being notified is different. The first thing that you will get is a decision on your hearing. Um, so the judge, after the hearing, takes all of his notes. He condenses them in some type of format, sends them to somebody who writes a decision like this. Now, in these decisions, uh, like this one is, what, 13, 19 pages? There's a lot of information in here um, that actually... For many, it's helpful because it helps you understand what conditions they evaluated, which ones allowed you to be approved for disability, which can help you going forward for your reviews and all that. But uh, for, for sake of chasing your money, this is just the notice of decision that it's fully favorable. Now, this doesn't have any financial information in it. And typically 45 to 60 days, you're going to receive another letter. This is called the award letter. Now the award letter for a hearing is similar to the award letter that you received at the initial and reconsideration. It has a, has a similar uh, money flow, but the money is going to go, the decision is going to go from the hearing office. This decision right here will go over to the payment center. So it's important that you look on the, um, you know, again, on your decision letter, just to see where the money is at. This is, this, this decision letter and this hearing, let, hearing award are from two different people. So it's two different um, payment centers. So then you're going to be wanting to look for uh, the one in, in Baltimore, Maryland, and that's where you would chase the money. Now, same thing here, you might get your back benefits before you get your award letter. That's possible. Hopefully that is the case. Um, <clears throat> and, but sometimes you don't. And here's a few things to note that uh, may hold up your money. Uh, one of the common things that does it is um, if somebody has other benefits associated with their uh, disability uh, case, which could be SSI that we talked about. If somebody filed and uh, filed for SSI and SSDI, or somebody was approved for SSI, especially, and also uh, approved for Social Security disability, that information goes to the payment center and they have to evaluate if you've been paid money because of SSI to help you through. Um, and if you have, they have to deduct that amount from the back benefits that they owe you. So that offset, that will delay you. At the time of this recording right now, I mean, we have one such situation that is, um, it'll be one year next month of the delay. So uh, that's one. Another one is workers' compensation. Um, could also provide the, the same thing. 
So for working on this, the payment centers, um, you know, there's some internal techniques that we have learned to use and collected from groups and others that we work with in the industry, um, which is a persistent drip of um, faxing, mailing, regular postal mail, uh, emailing, if we can obtain an address in some places we can, um, and then calling. So we do that on, on, on a cycle and, you know, sometimes <clears throat> because of the staffing issues with social security, uh, you just have to be polite and persistent, um, to get the, the, the monies released. Another thing that can cause a problem is sometimes social security by mistake will withhold too much money for the disability representative. The, instead of 7,200 being the max, I've seen them withhold, you know, 15 or 18 or even more. Um, and so the resolving that um, can, can be an issue. Uh, but the, the key here is there may be a delay, but you are getting paid from the government and they do pay. It's just, you know, you got to, you, you need to work through these, these uh, situations. Um, all right. So <clears throat> here at the Disability Digest, uh, we work on, you know, with, with the techniques that we've learned um, to get through and get the money released. Um, there's even a, a, like a representative line that we can call uh, for members that are a certain age um, that we can get through and have a high probability of talking to somebody. Uh, but if they're not in that age uh, group, then, you know, they fall prey to the other information that I've shared with you.